now coming to the another important topic that is the ventilation perfusion ratio what is ventilation perfusion ratio ventilation is nothing but the air flow so here we will be considering only the alveolar ventilation we discuss about two ventilation one is minute ventilation and alveolar ventilation here i am going to consider only the alveolar ventilation because only the alveolar ventilation is involved in gaseous exchanges so the alveolar ventilation is normally around 4.2 liters then coming to perfusion what is perfusion perfusion is nothing but the quantity of blood flow how much blood is flowing into the system or the lungs here the normal quantity of blood flow is around 5.4 liters now what is ventilation perfusion ratio the ratio between these two is the ventilation perfusion ratio which comes around 0.8 this normal value is 0.8 but the ideal will be 1 if the ratio is ideally 1 meaning the exact amount of ventilation is happening for the exact amount of perfusion even in the lung it is not in the ideal ratio and there is some regional differences in the vq ratio also the vq ratio is not similar similar throughout the lung this point it is an average value let's see what is the regional differences whenever we talk about regional differences we compare the apex with the base of the lung so let's see what happens in the apex so whenever the person is in upright posture what happens the lung is coming down and the space in the apical region is increasing that is the pleural space is increasing whenever the pleural space is increasing what happens to the volume the volume will ultimately increase whenever the volume increases what does Boyle's law states there is a decrease in pressure so decrease in pressure means it is the negative pressure if there is more negative pressure more and more expansion will happen so the negative pressure is there so that's why the region when you see at the apex of the lung all the alveoli are expanded to huge large sizes the number of alveoli is less but they are expanded to larger sizes because of the increased negative pressure in the apex so in the apex region what happens to this vq ratio the vq ratio is very very high in the apex what is the reason behind it because the perfusion is less in comparison to that of the ventilation so whenever the numerator that is the q or the quantity of blood flow is less and the ventilation is more what will happen to the ratio the ratio is going to be very very high whereas coming to the base whenever somebody is standing what happens to the base here there is a volume decrease leading on to the pressure increase in pressure whenever the pressure is increasing there is not much of negative force so what will happen to the vq ratio the vq ratio is going to be the least because here the ventilation and perfusion are mis mismatched and the ratio is coming to be very very less because here the ventilation is less there the perfusion was less in comparison to the in comparison to the ventilation here the ventilation is less in comparison to the perfusion but base we have so much of lung tissue and there are so many alveoli so when you talk about maximum ventilation and maximum perfusion both of them are present in the base but the ratio is least so don't get confused with the options vq ratio is maximum at the apex and vq ratio is least at the base but maximum ventilation and maximum perfusion is both of them are high at the base now let's talk about the extremes of vq ratio what is the extremes of vq ratio suppose we are considering condition where the ventilation is absolutely not there ventilation is zero and we are considering some conditions where the perfusion is zero so let's try to understand what happens so this is the normal lung where the vq ratio is around 0.8 so coming to this condition on the left side here we are trying to obstruct the ventilation suppose if the ventilation is obstructed what will happen to the vq ratio in the vq ratio the numerator is ventilation so if it is obstructed and it becomes zero obviously the ratio is going to become zero the ratio has become zero so what are the examples all these examples are mcqs so any foreign body obstruction the foreign body is obstructing the airway tumor is obstructing the airway or a tracheal spasm severe tracheal spasm is there no air is entering into the system at all tracheal spasm then one more example is very very important physiological shunt how does the physiological shunt has a vq ratio zero what is physiological shunt in pulmonary system we have two circulation one is the pulmonary circulation another one is the bronchial circulation the pulmonary circulation is the one which gets oxygenation whereas the bronchial circulation it supplies these regions and then it comes and directly connects with that of the arterial system so this blood is not getting any oxygenation 
because of it we considered here as the ventilation as zero here perfusion is present but it is not having any gaseous exchange so the ventilation becomes zero if the ventilation becomes zero then the ratio also becomes zero now coming to the another extreme condition where we are completely obstructing the perfusion if the perfusion is affected what is going to happen the denominator is going to be zero whenever the denominator is going to be zero what will happen to the ratio the ratio is going to be infinity so what is the best example for this kind of infinity ratio the best example is pulmonary embolism so whenever there is a pulmonary embolism vq ratio is going to be an infinity so all these are mcqs